Yeah, it's all guy coding again today. Uh, hey, look what we got on the bench here. It's a mini DC regulated power supply. I figure uh, I'm getting enough cards in here that I probably don't want to power it off the 5 volts from the Arduino output anymore, so I better get a power supply and I figured it'd be nice to have one that's adjustable for the lab here. So I got the HM305, which is the uh, 0 to 30, I believe, voltage and uh, up to 5 amps. So let's see what we got inside. All right, and here we go. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, we've got uh, the manual. It almost looks like English. Product manual. Yeah, it's multi-language, but in the printing is super small. But as long as I use the Braille method and rub my eyeball against the text, I should be able to read it. All right. Good deal. That's why it's nice to have a manual. And uh, it looks like there's a power supply cable here. Is that attached or uh, just in there? Maybe. Let's see if we can pull this out. Oof. There we go. Got a little packing material. A little packing material. Oh. Come off there. Thank you. And still in the box, we have a power cord, US power cord, and uh, a set of uh, power leads for uh, powering the circuit. They don't feel too bad. I ordered a heavier set too, just to have them, but these don't feel like they're, I mean, I'm not going to be cooking any. Uh, Get the bag off here and see what we have. Ta-da! All right, so this is a, a little little damaged right there. No, I think it's just a bubble on the... They've got plastic on here protecting that front plate, so that's just all that is. So it's a handmatic with an end that's backwards just to be, uh, you know, edgy. Let's see if we can pull off that, uh, I believe this defect here is from uh, on the covering, plastic covering. So let's see if there's a plastic covering I can remove here. Yes, that takes care of the problem entirely. Oh, nice uh, smooth finish on there, no damage in, during shipment. Um, the thing that I liked about this one is, you know, besides having the, the power on and off button, main power, let me zoom out a little bit here. It also has this output power, so you can turn the output on and off as, as needed. And these are not rotary, uh, they're not pots, they're actually rotary encoders and with selections. It's a little bit different than just adjusting it. Uh, you have to select the digit you want to adjust and, and go from there, but we'll learn more about that as we go. On the back we have a fan. It uh, supposedly only comes on when it's needed, and AC input 110 volts uh, only. All right, on the bottom there's some uh, rubber feet, a bunch of screws on the outside on the cabinet. Yeah, ventilation it looks okay to me, but what do I know? So let's go ahead and plug this guy in once and see what we can see it do. <clears throat> See if it powers up okay. So this cord is heavier than I thought it was going to be. It is a, a three-pronger on both sides, which is nice. I assumed it was going to be something rather thin and flimsy, but no, actually it's, it's not terrible. Alright, I'm going to try to balance it here so we can see what's going on. I'll zoom out a little bit more. And that light is not being very nice. Okay, we're going to hit the power here, smoke test. I just wanted to interject here and say that the um, flickering on the displays of the, the power supply 
um, don't occur in uh, real life. It's just because of uh, interference between the right refresh rate of the LEDs and the frame rate of the camera. So the display looks fine to the human eye. Came on. So it maxes out at 32 volts and 5.1 amps apparently. So let's uh, let's crack that voltage down. You hit the button there and you can keep hitting the button to move along to fix whatever digit you want. And if you stop at a certain spot, let's see, how do we adjust it? That's not working. You have to get in there really fast before it times out on you. So let's move to the next digit and we'll knock her down a ways here. I'm only going to be using 5 volts. So let's work around. So, you know, for us old folks, the timeout on that could be a little bit longer. There we go to 5 volts even. It's off right now. I hope you can see that. If we turn it on, it's got the amperage and the, the wattage here. So it's, it's off again. So let's go ahead and uh, plug something in the end there just to see what happens. All right, and what I've got here is uh, some DC motor out of something. It's probably like 12 volts or something like that, but uh, who cares? I'm just going to attach it directly to the knobs. Ground on this side. Leads are colored, but I don't care which direction it goes. Let's see if we can just squeeze that guy in there. Like that. And then we'll squeeze this one in over here. All right, and let's see if we turn on the power, what happens. So we can see the amperage that it's taking and the wattage. Whoop. If I apply some, ouch, <laughs> back pressure on it and burn my fingers, the amperage jumped up there quite well. Now supposedly we're supposed to be able to limit the current too, so let's look at that instead of uh, Let's take that off. Limit the current here. It just goes way too fast for an old guy like me. And let's knock it down to uh, 2 maybe uh, two tenths of an amp and see what happens. So let's power it back up again. Oh, and you can see right here the output current has been limited. We don't have quite enough to drive that with just a, a quarter of uh, um, amp of power. So let's go back and turn the output off and we'll go ahead and increase the amperage here. Oop, I want to go up there. We'll go to uh, one amp. There we go. Let's try it again. Looks like the current is still being limited. If I give it a little spin by hand, it takes off. Uh, but that startup current is just a little too high. It takes more than uh, takes more than an amp. Let's see. So I'll go back here and I'll go up to uh, one and a half amps. There we go. Right, and we're off, so let's turn it on. Yep, there it came right up. You can see that the amperage jumped up to uh, about 1.4 there on the startup of the, of the motor. Let's see if we can... Yep, current limited. <laughs> Will it go again? Give it a little spin. There it goes. Perfect. Well, this seems reasonable. It seems like it works like I would expect. Um, and it's off. Very cool. And just on that little thing, I've not heard the fan start up at all. So that's great. 
let's disconnect this motor here. <clears throat> and let's see if I can find the, the cord that came with it. Output uh, cable here. Yeah, a couple of banana plugs and a couple of alligator clips. It doesn't feel like it's really heavy gauge. So if you're going to be pushing a lot of amps, <laughs> although five, I think, would probably be able to, these might be able to handle it. But if you were pushing bigger amps on a bigger power supply, you might want to consider getting a better pair of um, power leads here. I did buy a better pair. Went and ordered this. The cable's a lot thicker and heavier. I think this was uh, 18 gauge. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, there's that. But that's uh, it's kind of nice knowing the current uh, that it's going to be taking. I've had one board here that I assembled for this this project over here, and uh, once I plugged it in, it didn't cut power up looked like it was draining too much power. I couldn't find a problem on it, but uh, I'm still troubleshooting that one. It'd be nice to see what the current compares on the two. Uh, but I've got, got to set up a separate power input for this section uh, and leave the uh, Arduino on uh, the USB. So, so far so good. Well, uh, you know, it's a lot of fine print here, but I think we pretty much have gone over a lot of it. Um, of course, back here there is a, uh, a fuse under this little box here. You probably can't see. Uh, under this little box, it indicates a fuse. Uh, apparently, we have to pry that off or something to change it. But uh, I'm not going to worry that about that at this point. It's working. Uh, just so we know where it's at, and it's changeable. It's not a usable link inside or something. Alright, so I've already got it mounted up over here. You can already see I've got it uh, dirty with some dust. <laughs> I've been uh, using this to work on my project, so I've got it set to 5 volts. Let's go ahead and turn it on once. Watch that LED down there. It does not turn on when you power it up. It turns on after you hit the uh, the output button. And then if you uh, power it off, oh, let's see, let's, I did that wrong. Let's turn it on and then power off. And I just wanted to demonstrate that when you power it up and it was last on, it starts up with itself off again. So you don't have to worry about that, that uh, it's being uh, zapped with something or unknown voltage when you accidentally have left the uh, output button on when you powered it down. So it automatically resets, which is a nice feature that I hadn't even thought about. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can see future episodes from this channel. And if you'd like to help out and support this channel, uh, go to patreon.com slash coding for as little as a dollar a month. We really appreciate it. Thanks. See you soon.